Hi, my name is Tom Oberbauer and I'll be speaking to you about the natural wonders of Baja California. I'm visiting a variety of islands off the west coast of Baja California, little visited at obscure islands, and today I'm standing on Guadalupe Island. It's basically the holy grail of islands for anybody who's interested in going to islands. This island is roughly 21 miles long, it's about 6 miles wide at the widest point, and it's 160 miles off the coast of western, northern Baja California about a third of the way down the peninsula. It's truly an oceanic island. It's a result of volcanic activity that occurred between 9 and 12 million years ago, and it has a variety of species of plants and animals that were endemic to it. There's roughly 34 species of plants and roughly a dozen species and subspecies of varieties of birds that were only found here on Guadalupe Island. Unfortunately, in the early 1800s, goats were brought to this island and released and they reproduced and they destroyed much of the vegetation on the island. Through the group work of groups like Grupo Ecologica Conservation de Isla and Ezequiel Escura when he was working with the federal government in Mexico and Island Conservation Ecology Group, this island has had the goats removed and so it's been a tremendous benefit to the island. Vegetation is appearing, plants that have not been seen before are showing up on the island, new species of plants that have never been seen before have shown up, and it's a fantastic situation. It's a wonderful thing, it's one of the best restoration activities, restoration sites in Mexico. So as we go a little further, I will be showing more video and a little bit more information about Guadalupe Island. Here we are on an aerial tour of the west coast of Guadalupe Island, starting with the southern end with the islets off the coast, extending up the west coast with the large cliffs, and passing by El Picacho Peak, as well as the cliffs that are nearly 4,000 feet high near Mount Augusta and the Pine Ridge on the far north end. When I first visited the island in the late 1970s, a large portion of the island was very barren due to the excessive grazing by goats, as you can see in these next few slides. And in one slide you can actually see a large number of goats going up the ridge. At point, one point there was considered to be 30,000 goats on the island. During the time that the goats were on the island, there was no reproduction from any of the conifers or any of the other vegetation for that matter, so you only had some very large old pine trees that were dying slowly of old age, and then you had barren understory with no reproduction, barren cliffs, in some places there was no soil, and there were no young trees whatsoever, and it gradually the pine forest was dying off one tree by one tree. In addition to the pines, one of the endemic trees on the island is an endemic palm, Brahia edulis. During the time of the goats, there was no reproduction of the palms as well, so that they were also dying off one by one. One of the major factors influencing the forests and the vegetation in its entirety on Guadalupe Island is fog. Guadalupe Island has more fog days than any other place in Southern California or Baja California. A high percentage of its summer days have fog on the north end of the island practically every day and as you can see in these videos the fog is in constant motion and it provides precipitation for the and condensation for the vegetation as well as providing a spectacular landscape. <music>
As I mentioned earlier, while the goats were on the island, there was no reproduction of any of the pines beneath the old, old trees. But now that the goats have been removed, the trees are reproducing very successfully with large numbers of trees around 8 or 10 years old. And you can see in these videos those reproduction as well as you can hear the wind and observe the condensation from the fog blowing across the island. Guadalupe Island also supports the island oak, Quercus tomentella. It grows on the California Channel Islands as well as the Guadalupe Island. And on Guadalupe Island, unfortunately, it grows on the ridge tops where the goats ate the, the vegetation, the soil eroded away, and in many places the soil is gone. There's nothing to hold the roots of the oak trees and they have fallen down the cliffs. Now there are very few oak trees, or a small number of oak trees left, and there are efforts to cause reproduction so that they can re-vegetate re uh, parts of the island with the oaks. This is the southern cypress forest on Guadalupe Island. Looking toward the north end, you can see Pilot Rock, that little point out at the end of the northern point of the island. You can see some of the pine forest in the far distance. And we have uh, the cypress right in front of us. So the removal of the goats from the island, there's been quite a bit of reproduction of the endemic Guadalupe Island cypress. Cypress act a little bit like a closed cone species on the islands. On the mainland, they're definitely closed cone species where the cones only open up pretty much, pretty much restricted to opening up after they've been heated by a fire. And the heat makes the resin burst open and the seeds are able to be released. On the islands, it, if a tree is present and there's appropriate conditions, reproduction can occur without a fire. But in 2008, when there was the large fire, tremendous amount of seeds were dispersed by the heat of the flames opening the cones and there was a tremendous amount of reproduction and as you can see, there's a solid stand of young trees coming up where the where the forest used to be so that the forest has basically been rejuvenated as a result of the fire in 2008. Prior to the fire it seemed like the trees were not reproducing much at all except occasionally since the fire tremendous reproduction and a rejuvenation and reestablishment of the forest. You can still see some of the old skeletons of the tall trees that were the, the trees that were killed by the fire but in the foreground you can see the young trees coming up as well. The interesting thing is that if the, had, the goats had not been on the island, there wouldn't have been a large fire in 2008. What had happened was the goats over the years had gnawed away the bark on the trees and exposed the heartwood. The heartwood caught fire as the fire came creeping along the ground. It burned out the inside of the tree trunk and then it fell over and it was kind of an a domino effect. But, the, but as a result of the heating of the cones, there were thousands and thousands of seeds released and then the following seasons, there were thousands of young seedlings that were also coming up. So that these small seedlings were taken, photographs were taken in 2010 and as you can see in these later videos, the trees are now much larger and they're vigorously growing and, and expanding the forest once again. Off the south end of the main island of Guadalupe Island, there are two islets. The inner islet is sometimes referred to as Isla Toro or Isla Adentro. And then the other one further back is Isla Zapato or Isla Afuero. These two islets have unique species of plants on them and they're kind of a refuge from the mainland when, from when the goats were on the mainland because the goats never got to those islets. In the late 1970s when I visited the island there were no Laysan albatross but then they started showing up apparently around 1983 so that when I 
came to the island again in the middle 1980s, there were Laysan albatross here. The Laysan albatross have spread from the Laysan Islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and they worked their way out this direction, possibly by because of global warming or what other factors there might be, but they start, established a colony on the south end of Guadalupe Island and on the islets. So now the colony has become large enough that there's several hundred pairs on the main part of the island and especially on the outer islet. The albatross chicks grow very slowly and they become fairly large. In fact, they become larger or heavier than the parents do before they fledge because the parents go out in the sea, they catch uh, squid and other kinds of marine invertebrates for food, and then they come back and feed the young, and then the young become very large, and then they will gradually lose a little bit of weight as they put out their regular feathers and learn to fly. Guadalupe Island is the ancestral home for the Guadalupe fur seal. It's a unique species of fur seal that occurs in this area, and it originally extended up to around San Miguel Island. And occasionally now they even go up to San Miguel Island. But up until the 1950s and the early 1960s, they were thought to be completely extinct. And then the, the population has very slowly, gradually expanded to the point now where there's several thousand individuals. Here they are swimming around at the south end of Guadalupe Island. The northern elephant seal is another mammal, marine mammal that has survived from Guadalupe Island. They formerly extended way up the coast into northern California and way down into southern parts of Baja California, but then they were hunted to near extinction in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. Now there are probably 150,000 of these animals living up and down the coast of California, and they all descended from the, a few animals that were hiding in caves around Guadalupe Island. Here we see some pups from this season basking on the northeast anchorage on Guadalupe Island. Guadalupe Island was also home to a number of endemic varieties and species of birds. One of the species that was endemic was a caracara, a predatory raptor bird, and there was also an endemic storm petrel, the Guadalupe storm petrel, that had become extinct. Here we have the, the Guadalupe junco, which is one of the few remaining of the land birds that still exist on the island that's endemic to the island. So the goats were removed in approximately 2005. Since then the vegetation has begun to recover and plants such as Senecio palmeri and Lupinus niveus are starting to spread over lands that were formerly completely barren. Many of these shrubs have silver leaves because of their adaptation to the fog and the desert-like conditions that exist on the island in other ways. One of the really interesting things is that the endemic palm tree, Brahia edulis, is now reproducing. While the goats were on the island, the fruits would germinate, or the seeds from the fruits would germinate underneath the trees, but the goats would come and eat the germinating plants and leave the soil completely barren around the trees. Now that the goats are gone, the trees are able to reproduce and there are young ones starting to grow around the bases of the old large trees. A beautiful endemic plant that occurs on Guadalupe Island is Tritelia guadalupensis. It's in the asparagus family and it has a bulb at the base and reproduces flowers only in seasons that are after a good rainfall year. Another one of the beautiful endemic plants from Guadalupe Island is the Schulzia elegans. It's related to California poppy, but it has different shaped petals in the flowers. There are three species of tar plants that are endemic to Guadalupe Island. This is Dianandra greeniana subspecies palmeri. It is a perennial one, which means it's multi-year lived, and it flowers in the late summer and fall. Here we have Pertile and Cana. Pertile and Cana is in the sunflower family. It's another one of the silver-leaved shrubs that occurs in the northern part of Guadalupe Island. It was considered very rare for a long period of time because of the goat feeding on the plants. In 1981, I climbed a very steep cliff face in order to collect some seeds for propagation. Now it has recovered to the point where it is found in scattered locations as a significant part of the vegetation community over the northern part of the island. Another example of the success of the goat removal program. 
This is a photograph of the plant on the cliff from 1981. Here we have Senecio Palmeri. Senecio Palmeri was originally named after Edward Palmer, who was the first botanical explorer to visit Guadalupe Island. This plant was known to be pretty common at that time, composing part of the coastal sage scrub type of vegetation in the upper parts of the island. People at that time thought, well, it'll never go extinct because it's so prolific and so common at that point. However, over the years that the goats were on the island, it diminished in area until the point where it was actually thought to be extinct. As the goats were being removed from the island, a population was discovered on a very steep cliff face not far from here in the northern part of the island. In 2005, that population was the only population that existed on the island. Now it has spread to cover large areas of the northern part of the island and its beautiful color of yellow is very common in the springtime. In 2010, when I visited the island with a number of botanists, we discovered this plant that you see here. This is some kind of a pseudonaphalium, but it hasn't been described yet. So it's a new species that must have been hanging out and surviving on the cliff faces, and when the goats are gone, it blows across the island and reproduces. On the southern end of the island, in some of the areas that almost seem barren, you can find this plant, Mammillaria blasfeldiana variety shirleyana, it's a species of fishhook cactus. This is a plant that's fairly common in Southern California and Baja California and grasslands and coastal sage scrub. It's called wild hyacinth or Diclostema capitatum. It's a bulbous plant that puts up leaves in the springtime and then it will flower. However, when the goats were there, the goats ate all of the leaves and there were no flowers. So in fact, when it first started showing up in the areas where the landings were, people thought it must have been brought in. But as soon as the goats were removed, it exploded everywhere. And it wasn't that there were new plants growing up. They, what was happening was that the bulbs that were in the soil were now able to put up their flowers and display themselves. There are some plants that occur on Guadalupe Island and only on the other California Channel Islands, such as this plant, Gambelia speciosa, or island snapdragon. It occurs on Guadalupe Island as well as San Clemente and Catalina Island. Another one of these island endemics that's found on Guadalupe Island and on some of the other California Channel Islands is Mimulus latifolius. This is a monkey flower. It's an annual monkey flower and it was originally collected on Santa Cruz Island and on Catalina Island but those populations have never been refound. However, on Guadalupe Island it still occurs in several locations. One of the interesting plant recoveries on Guadalupe Island involves Ceanothus arboreus, as shown here. Ceanothus arboreus was first discovered inside of a caged area that was placed around pine trees to prevent goats from getting into the pine trees. It was not known by the early explorers, and it was not found by anyone prior to that period, which means that it was already gone when the early botanical explorers came to the island. Ceanothus seedlings, seeds are very long-lived and so what happened is that there was a large seed bank and each year there must have germinate there must have been some germination of the plants the goats would come and eat those seedlings and they would be disappearing now that the goats are gone the seed bank had been diminishing little by little but there still were a few seeds around so now that the goats are gone the seedlings are able to grow and survive and grow up into large shrubs there is another ceanothus at least one other one that grows on Guadalupe Island Ceanothus cuneatus, which may be this species or it might be slightly different. It's not clear taxonomically which is the right name to put on this plant, but it was collected by the early explorers on the island and it has now also recovered in some places on the island. Here we have a shot of the cliff face on the northwestern part of the island. This is the kind of place, cliff face where some of the plants may have survived while the goats were there. And this is a drop from here down to the water of about 4,000 feet in elevation. I've already spoken about the fog and some of the weather events on the island, but here we have some of the wind, very strong winds that make it difficult to even walk on the northern ridges and in the valleys. 
This is a view down one of the tributaries to the Twin Canyons on the east side of the island. The Twin Canyons flow from the top of Mount Augusta, the highest point on the island, straight down to the ocean. There are palms and oaks in the bottom of the canyon. We've been hiking for a number of days, but the wind has been very strong the whole time we've been here, so that I haven't been able to record much. This is an indication of the types of various climates that you have on Guadalupe Island. You can have cold, windy conditions in the north part of the island, you can have warm, dry conditions in the canyons on the east side, and you can have strong winds in clear conditions on the south side. I have already mentioned the two islets on the southern end of the main part of the island. Isla Toro is the one that's in the upper part of the photograph, and in the year 2000 we were able to take a helicopter and land on this islet and walk where no person had ever walked before. Here we have a view across the islet and it's mostly covered with lichens, you can see in this photograph, but there were also some pretty spectacular plants including Stephanomeria guadalupensis, the silver leaf plant in the foreground, as well as Cystanthi guadalupensis, which is the succulent with bright pink flowers. It's in the Portulaca family. It's also endemic to Guadalupe Island. Both of these plants were found on the main part of the island, but they're very, very rare on, that, on the main part of the island.